good afternoon, good morning, um, wherever you may be. Um, and appreciate the time this afternoon. You're going to spend learning more about our Starship Cloud solution. Uh, we appreciate um, all of your business with our ship gear product over these last 20 some odd years of using ship gear. And as many of you may know now that ship gear will be sunset at the end of 2023. Um, so we're proud to kind of give you more information around our Starship solution, what that can do, how we can optimize your shipping efficiencies here. And that's what we're here to talk about a little bit today. Um, so I'm going to go through a brief presentation and then I'm going to turn it to Jake, um, who will take you through a brief demo of Starship with uh, Microsoft um, GP um, to kind of show you the integration, what it can do for you. Um, and then we'll open it up to some questions here at the end as well. So uh, without further ado, we will get this uh, started. So uh, when we look at, you know, shipping in general, you know, we, we always know that there's shipping challenges that a lot of customers may have. Um, so when we look at those shipping challenges, just a few come to mind. Um, right now, most customers, you know, in your position using ShipGear, you have kind of a what we call a quasi integrated solution, maybe with World Ship or Ship Manager. But as we know, there's other modes out there, LTL being one of those, um, also other carriers, right? You know, maybe post office, maybe DHL um, that are not integrated currently. You may have to do things manual. Um, so again, you know, when we look at this question, why do I have to manually re-enter information, right? This can come up in certain occasions for you. Um, we also talk about websites, and we'll talk briefly on this today with e-commerce integrations, right, as well. Um, but also some customers, especially in the LTL world, or even say if you're trying to get a rate from the post office, you might be using that separately outside of your ship gear integration. Um, so again, we always look at how many portals, how many websites do you really have to go through um, really to either process a shipment or even rate quota shipment. And that's something we'll talk about here in a minute as well. Again, talking about LTL, right? You know, if you are shipping pallets at all in your environment, right? You may be doing things manual. And that's what we find oftentimes with a lot of our ship gear users. They're going to six, seven, maybe different websites, portals, just to get one rate for one shipment. That takes a lot of time to do in someone's environment. Right, so we always look how we can manage that process better for them. And again, we'll touch on that briefly today, but if you do have LTL shipping, um, please let us know. We're happy to do a separate <clears throat> demo uh, for you around that um, to kind of really get into the you know uh, weeds of it all and what uh, uh, Starship can offer you when it comes to LTL shipping. Again, manually updating GP with those carriers you may not be integrated with with ship gear, right? So you may be integrated with UPS, with ship gear and GP today. However, you may not be with FedEx, right? And we see that oftentimes as well, um, how we can bring all of your parcel carriers into one place. Um, again, that's something we can uh, take a look at. And then looking at shipping costs, right? Again, start, you know, Jake will show you kind of a rate shop that's built into Starship. How do we look at, you know, ways to kind of look at improving those efficiencies uh, when it comes to getting your best rates, fastest transit times, et cetera. Um, so again, Starship has that rate function, rate shop functionality built into it um, to help you do that and get the best rates for that shipping, uh, for that shipment itself. So again, all of these shipping challenges that are faced, right, can be done right through um, our Starship integration. So we're going to talk a little bit about our, you know, the origin story, kind of VTEC Starship, kind of where it all came from. Uh, we'll talk about that multi-carrier strategy, some of the features, benefits, um, the GP integration itself. Um, we'll talk about why cloud, right? That's a lot what you may all be hearing in the di digital transformation journey a lot of customers are taking to get into the cloud and then some of the analytics around Starship. So again, um, really brief, um, Starship was born in 1989. Um, many customers don't know that uh, because you may have been using ship gear for all of these years, uh, but Starship's really our flagship product at VTech. Um, it's been around a long time. It's been integrated with GP since the mid 1990s. Um, so a long-standing relationship in this space, 30-plus um, years of experience in various ERP integrations, especially with Microsoft Ray Planes, um, and again, having that multi-carrier functionality to be able to process, you know, not only your parcel labels, but LTL, hazardous shippers. If you're doing any hazardous, it's one of our unique features that we can provide to you uh, when it comes to your hazardous documents, international shipments. All of that can be really consolidated into our application here. 
again, when we look at a multi-carrier strategy, what are we looking for, right? We're giving you the ability to rate shop and rate shop basically um, can be done multiple ways, individually, meaning click a button and get a best rate. Uh, we can set up rules um, where we can identify certain maybe shipping lanes, um, you know, by uh, what's going to be the quickest transit time, right? That's going to offer you the best rates. Um, maybe you want to do a rule for post office, right? Where it says, hey, if this is within a two day transit time, switch it to, you know, a postal mode type of thing to give you the best rate. So again, we can, you know, set those various rules up. Um, rules um, as well can be done on a markup percentage or flat rate. Uh, we have something and Jake will touch on this with applied rates um, that can be written back into Great Plains for you. Um, so you can take advantage of those marked up rates and invoice your customers correctly. Um, again, having the ability to do all your parcel labels as well as your LTL bill ladings on one application, no more going to separate portals, having your metrics all in front of you within reports, um, which we'll touch on as well. Um, having that information is very uh, handy when it comes time for negotiations. So you definitely want to take advantage of that when you sit down with your carrier reps to kind of talk about your pricing agreements and knowing where your shipments are being, go where they're going, um, but also maybe some weights. Um, so when you do kind of talk discounts, you can kind of strategize on where your best discounts should be. And then processing efficiency, right? Again, getting rid of, you know, all of these portals, being able to be in one place, you know, all across the company, the organization, and having an ability to really um, improve those efficiencies by getting the information in real time and distribute it back out um, to Great Plains for you. <clears throat> in designing the application, right, obviously we give you a whole interface, a UI, which Jake will take, take you through, but this interface actually is customizable. Um, so what you see today may not be something you may wanna add some columns, you may wanna add some um, you know, design to it that gives you the ability to look at orders a certain way um, versus just a standard, you know, design template that we give you. Um, we leverage line item detail, which Shipgear does not do today. So we bring in all your items from GP to allow you to pack those accordingly. Those items, we also store key data to help with international, to help with your bill of lading documentation, also hazardous profiles being set up at the item level. So again, we use item level detail um, uh, for these specific um, types of shipments, uh, but also gives you that ability to pack your boxes accordingly as well. Um, drop shippers, if any drop shippers out here, by all means, we can simplify that for you as well um, by you know, allowing you know, different sender IDs to be set up so we can put different ship from locations on your labels, things of that nature, um, if you like. And then consolidation of orders, right? Being able to ship multiple orders together in one shipment seems to be a popular feature as well. Again, giving you that um, you know, ability to consolidate those so you have one master shipment. Uh, that's also Starship um, can do for you here as well. When we look at the GP right back, right? And I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but I'll let kind of Jake show this to you. But again, what we're updating, we're updating your order header notes, right? So tracking information, shipped on date, service level, um, and a lot more, right? So these, we give you the ability to set whatever information you want to be written back into GPs up to you as a user um, with our integration, um, ability to update the freight cost into the freight cost field, um, additional values, right? The custom field, that seems to be very important for GP users. So maybe not your standard information, but you maybe want a reference number or a serial number, whatever it may be to be written back into a custom field that's also something that we can do. One of the things that a lot of our users will do is send their contracted rates back to a uh, custom field so they can run their own reports within GP to see what they've invoiced versus what the carrier actually quoted them at that time of shipment so they can run their own you know, uh, variance reports uh, within GP. We also have something called SQL extension um, as a module that's built in that um, can go outside of your native fields, right, and pull information in from tables that might be you know, outside of the uh, actual uh, GP standard tables and pull that information as well. So again, uh, used you know, quite often, but again, maybe not involved in everyone's environment, but it is available to go outside of those standard uh, tables that uh, reside in GP here. And again, why do we look at the cloud, right? Why is someone wanting to go cloud versus staying with an on-prem instance of Starship or Shipgear? Um, really the number one thing is the reduction of IT expenses. Right, your ship gear server is going to be removed. 
There is no Starship server, Starships running in Microsoft Azure um, environment up in the cloud. It's a true uh, multi-tenant environment. Um, there's no more updates to worry about. It's automatically updated for you. Um, always gonna be running on the latest version uh, for you as well. Um, Starship allows access to unlimited users as well as unlimited carriers, meaning whatever carriers we integrate to will provide those to you at no additional cost. Whereas our on-prem instance, you're buying those um, kind of a la carte. Um, we give that to you for one monthly cost, essentially. Um, manage seasonality. We have a lot of seasonal shippers out there. Um, so again, being able to change your plan throughout the year based on your peak and off seasons is very important. Uh, restricting user access, right? So here you can give users certain access to do certain things in the application. So maybe the shipper might only have shipment and um, maybe a dashboard uh, view that they can access versus the administrator who has access to the pricing plans, um, all the payment information, all of that um, as well. So again, up to the administrators to really decide what access they wanna provide. Um, and then the last bullet point, probably the most important for all of you, um, this eliminates world ship and ship manager applications, okay? Some may love it, some may not so much love it, uh, but really Starship's a true multi-carrier shipping solution. We load your UPS account numbers in, we load your FedEx account numbers in, uh, we do that with all of the carriers. We have your negotiated rates that are shown, um, billing, pickups, all of that remain the same nothing changes other than the actual application goes away. Um, so that's very important to note as well uh, when we look at Starship. This is just a quick glance of all the various carriers that we support today from LTL and Parcel. Again, we have about 25 different integrations. We do support a couple of 3PLs as well from the LTL stand of it or side of it. Um, but again, it's really up to you um, if you're using these carriers as a you know, direct basis, um, if you don't see a carrier that you might be using, please ask. Uh, we do have options to kind of do some workarounds to generate a bill of lading maybe, or maybe even a, um, uh, a parcel defined module that we have for a parcel carrier outside of these carriers. So again, we do have some workarounds that we can work with you if you don't see a carrier here listed um, as well. And then kind of a couple last points I wanna make really just to highlight this and Jake will take you more through this. Starship as a full um, application um, dashboard view, <coughs> excuse me, um, dashboard view where uh, we give you access to various charts, um, distribution maps. So you see there on the right corner, upper right corner, that's a distribution map of all of your shipments being distributed. And you'll see the red dots and spots, right? Those are your hot zones. So you see in this case, an example, the Eastern half of the country, I'm very heavy in. Western half, not so much. Right, so there might be opportunity for you to, um, you know, expand markets, uh, maybe expand locations, uh, whatever it may be. But we give you access to a lot of different reports and views, um, so you don't have to bother the carrier reps any longer. It's all built into here as well. And I'm going to pass it over to Jake um, for a quick demo of Starship, um, and we can open up to questions after that. So, Jake, I will make you presenter. Uh, one second. Sounds great. Okay, can you see my screen here? I can. Yep. Perfect. Well, again, thank you all for joining um, this afternoon, this morning. So what we're going to do here is just walk you through a quick parcel workflow, touch on some high points here inside of Starship. Um, and then like Simon said, we'll open up the questions towards the end here. But what you're seeing here is basically the home screen of Starship. So when you, um, your, your company will get a customized URL, a dedicated URL from Starship here. So each company will have their own URL. So you'll come into here and this will be all of your sales orders and sales transactions that are ready to be shipped out and processed. Uh, you see up here, I've got some filters, just kind of filtering the data down to filter off a different batch ID or filter off a specific customer. Um, you can add as many filters as you'd like to kind of narrow down the search if you want to batch process off a certain customer. Um, so like in, Star in ship here, up here in the top left, you can type in your order number that you want to ship off of, or you can scan a barco barcode and that will bring the order to the top here ready to ship and process. Or you can come down here, this little truck icon, 
and that's going to bring in the single screen view of the specific order that you're ready to ship and process. So basically, this is the order that you brought in from GP into Starship. Kind of going across the top here, you see up there, you got your source. This is just a check and balance of the order that you're shipping. You see order 147. Um, you have your ship to and your ship from. You notice up top here. With the ship to, you're also going to notice a red X in the top right here. That's just our address verification working on the back end. Just giving you a quick heads up saying, hey, before you ship and process this order, you might want to check this specific address that you're shipping to. Check with your customer that they gave you the correct address or check that it's entered correctly inside of GP. Another thing you're going to notice down here is business without a loading dock. So for any kind of LTL shipping that you're currently doing um, with inside your business, this is just starts with giving you a heads up saying, hey, this company doesn't, this, this location doesn't have a loading dock. Make sure you book the necessary equipment with your LTL shipping. So making sure, hey, I need to book a lift gate for this specific carrier. So there's no failure of delivery. There's no um, failed equipment charges on the back end. So you're not getting that back end charge that you don't want to see. So Starship kind of takes away that piece for you. Moving through here, next to your transportation, this is just the ship via that came over um, from GP. You can change the carrier and service in here if you want to, and Starship has reverse translation. So if you change it with inside of Starship, when it writes back into GP, it'll also update the carrier and service inside of GP as well. Um, prepaid comes in automatically, but if you have any third-party billing, you can have that set up into Starship to have that automatically placed for you. So any third-party billing accounts can be auto-populated here for you. So there's no human error having to enter in billing account information every single time. Starship can kind of take over that piece for you, really streamlining that process of um, using your customer's accounts when you ship a third party. Keep moving forward here. Next, you've got any accessorials that you want to have inside of Starship. You can add insurance to your orders. Um, with Starship, you do have access to Quantum View or FedEx Insights. So if you're currently using that today, you can utilize that with inside of Starship. But I'll show you towards the end of the demo of why. Um, you might just use UPS Quantum View for the exception piece of um, UPS Quantum View, where you know if there's an issue in transit, you want that coming from the carrier. Because Starship does have a um, e-notify tool where you can send customized emails to your customers, and I'll touch on that towards the end of the demo here as well. Just moving forward here, next year for packaging. This is the items that came into Starship um, from GP that have been packaged out. Um, you see here just two items of the quantities have been packaged into this drill case. Starship has a packaging database, so any kind of packages that you're using with inside of your warehouse today, Starship can remember each of those packages for you. Um, we also have the ability to connect to a parcel scale, so you see the parcel scale up here as well as the actual weight. But we also calculate the build weight, which is dimensional weight, which carriers will bill you off of. So it's nice to kind of see that and know what you're going to be built off of. So there's no discrepancies in the back end. There's no issues in the back end of being charged for um, what the carrier might have billed you off of. You know that up front and you know um, what you're going to be billed off of when you send this package out. Next assignment says Starship does have line item integration. So right here, you're going to see just some line item detail of the specific items that you're shipping out. If you jump in a little bit more here, it kind of breaks it out in more in depth. You'll see class information and NMFC number uh, information has been placed here as well. So for any LTL shipping that you're doing, you've got your hazardous profiles here. So Starship recognizes it has that profile coming over. That box will be checked off. And typically for um, international shipping, if you're shipping internationally, you will see an international tab up here as well with some more in-depth information for international shipping, such as country of origin, and all the good information that you'll need for international shipping will be housed there of that specific item um, inside of Starship. Continue to move forward down here. Next, you'll see your total charges. Uh, again, we'll show, we can show list rates here and publish rates. We're kind of hiding that right now. So all you'll see is your contracted rate as well as the applied rate. Um, what the contracted rate is, is basically your contracted rate with UPS, your FedEx contracted rate through your account numbers. Um, inside of Starship, we don't give you any discounted rates out other than uh, with post office. So with post office, we will provide you with an easy post account where you will receive some discounted rates. But what you're seeing here is your UPS account. And as Simon mentioned as well earlier in the presentation, we have the ability to add different freight rules into your Starship instance. So here um, you notice that this information here shows Starship giving a 25% markup, you can have that 
kind of a generic markup across the board. So every order that comes in will have a freight rule attached to it for a markup. Um, but it also has more in depth. So you can dial it in per customer. You can give specific customers different handling fees. You can make free shipping. However, you want to use these freight rules, you have the ability to customize as many as you'd like across the board. So say you're looking at this rate and you want to check all of your carrier accounts, you can come down here and hit shop all. And this is going to begin pinging the APIs with all the carriers that you have accounts with and that we have APIs built with inside of Starship. So right now it's just currently working here. So you can filter off different required delivery dates. So if you need this to come um, get delivered by a certain date, you can filter off that. You can filter off cheapest or quickest delivery, but you also see here, you're gonna get LTL rates. Uh, so Starship will bring you an LTL rate and a parcel rate. So kind of those, those orders that are kind of on the cups, cusp of where it can go for LTL, or if it can go parcel, Starship will bring you both rates. So this is where you can kind of decide and make the decision. Okay, maybe I can save a little bit, a bit of money here um, or pick a quicker carrier or you know pick a different service or whatever the case may be. You have that ability to do so here to kind of you know be flexible with your shipping preference uh, moving forward. But for this instance, we're gonna stick with UPS ground here and we're gonna go ahead and ship and process this order. And once you ship and process this order, this is going to begin pinging the uh, printers you have configured inside of Starship. So any kind of zebra printer or laser printer that you're working with will print labels. You can print packing slips, BOLs, um, OP900s for hazmat, or any inter kind of international documentation that you need for your specific order. Starship will begin printing that for you um, right off the bat there. So now I'm going to jump back into GP and show you what that write back looks like. So you see here as um, the order was shipped and processed, we're going to update the batch ID. So it came over in as SOP orders, but you see Starship updated that to batch ID to show shipped, just kind of a confirmation. Um, you see down here, we write back to the freight amount with the applied rate. So that's with the markup, with the handling fee. But we also write back into the notes section here with the tracking link of the package that we sent, the item quantity, all the good information that you want to see for that specific order gets written back into this notes section. So anyone can jump in there see the basic information they need for that specific order. Um, so you don't have to go back into GP and re-enter that information every time. Starship will do that for you. We also write back these user defined fields here with, again, the tracking link. So uh, people can jump in there and see that tracking link. Another confirmation would it, that it was shipped. But we also write back your contracted rate here. So along with the applied rate written, uh, written back into the freight section, we write back your contracted rate. So you can do some reconciliation there. So now that we've shipped and processed this order, I'm gonna jump back into Starship here and show a few more pieces, and then I'm gonna toss it over back to Simon. So as I said earlier with the quantum view piece of it, um, Starship has an e-notify tool built into it. So what we do here is we give the, you the ability to customize any kind of email notifications you want going to your customers. So I like to basically say this is kind of your canvas and you can you know, design it any way you want to when it comes to emails. Um, you can add any kind of logos or verbiage on here. Um, you've got the tracking link and what items are coming to your specific customers. Um, you can also add any coupon codes that you want to, but you can have a generic email across the board, or you can have more specific emails um, kind of dialed into specific customers if needed. Now jumping into the dashboard here, Simon mentioned a little bit that um, we've got some heat maps going to different, different distribution points. You can add total costs, total orders, you can add as many different um, charts as you want here. So you can kind of configure this screen to show what you want it to see. Um, but we also have different reports down here that are kind of more dialed in. So you can jump into these different reports and see maybe our charge comparison where we see our applied rates versus our contracted rates. And so you dive into that report. If you see any negatives, then you can make the, the, the thought, okay, so I'm seeing a negative charge here. Maybe I need to update my freight rules to increase my markup for that specific customer. So I know that we're making money every time on our orders instead of losing money. So you have the ability to kind of run these reports at as many times as you want. You're not limited, but it kind of gives you a more dialed in um, freight report about your whole shipping distribution as a whole um, that comes out of the box with Starship. So that right there is a pretty you know high level standard parcel workflow with inside of Starship. Um, so now I'm going to pass it back over to Simon. All right. Well, thanks, Jake. And um, no, I just appreciate everyone's time today. And Will and, and Jake will follow up with you here um, after today's call. Like I said, we need to do a deeper dive demo. Um, Jake can definitely do that with you all, especially if we want to see more on the LTL side. 
what it potentially can do for you, we're happy to do so. So again, thank you. Um, and we look forward to having you on Starship here soon.